This is Roaring Robotics, a high school robotics team from Kingman, Arizona. And for the last two and a half months, we have been designing, building, programming, and sharing our robot for our first qualifier of the season. I am right now programming the robot so we have an autonomous that can actually work. If you don't know what's going on, FTC or First Tech Challenge is a middle and high school robotics competition where teams build robots to score points in each year's game. The goal of this year's game is to score cones by placing them onto junctions of varying heights. The game is divided into two main sections, autonomous and driver control. The autonomous period is the first 30 seconds of the match. The robot must move using pre-programmed instructions during this time, which is what the team is currently working on. After the first 30 seconds are up, the teams have two minutes to control their robots manually. The alliance that scores more points wins that match. And now, back to the show. We're going to win and we are going to make it all the way to Worlds. Bro, my auto is cracked. Robot, are you going to crash at all during this competition? <laughs> yeah. Good answer. We started this day feeling confident. Our auto was now working and we were prepared for the first match of the day. After opening ceremonies, we were first to play in our first qualifying match of the day and, well, we'll just let you see how it went. Our team accidentally ran the wrong autonomous program, which resulted in not scoring any points and the lift didn't go all the way down. The way our driver control program works, the lift's starting position at the beginning of the driver control period is like point zero. To prevent breaking the lift, the lift cannot go below point zero. Since the lift started higher up when the code started, we couldn't lower the lift down and score any points throughout the match, and unfortunately, we lost the match. The next match was coming up fast, so we removed any unnecessary programs from the driver station and added a button on the driver's controls that could override the lift's limits, allowing them to recover the match if something like the first match happened again. We began our second match, and things started going well. The auto worked perfectly this time, scoring a cone onto a high junction and parking in the substation. The driver control period began, and we started placing cones onto junctions. However, we were at a disadvantage. We were facing against one of the best robots at the event from Team 2844 Valley X Robotics. We knew it was going to be a tough fight to win the match. Our alliance partner unfortunately couldn't move very much so we were scoring points mostly on our own. We also didn't have a real strategy at the time other than score cones on junctions. In the end, Valley X and their partner, Unknown Robotics, won the match 103-64. There is more than one way to qualify for the state championship. The most well-known way is to be on the winning alliance of the robot game. However, there are some awards given out to teams that can advance you. The most important award of these awards is the Inspire Award. The Inspire Award is given to the team that embodies what the program is about, inspiring your community and creating awareness for STEM, while also scoring high in all other categories during the competition. Last February, we won the Inspire Award at the Arizona State Championship and gave us the opportunity to be one of two teams from our state advancing to the world championships, and we want to do that again. For the last seven months, we participated in many outreach events, including presentations, FLL summer camps, parades, a county fair, and volunteering at many events to support our community. Last night, we went into the judging room and presented our robot and outreach to the judges. If the robot competition didn't work out for us, we could still hope for the Inspire Award to advance us to the state championship. We once again didn't have long after the last match that we had to be back up on the field for our third match of the day, but we felt confident about this one. Qualification match 16 began.
The auto worked perfectly once again, however we were still at a disadvantage. Our alliance partner didn't show up to the match, so we were on our own against the opposing alliance. The match started slow, but we managed to save about even in points to the opposing alliance. However, around a minute into driving, we accidentally missed scoring a cone into a high junction, and it bounced off the ground and into the one of the opposing robots from Plus 3 Robotics. The scores were tight as endgame began, but then something unexpected happened. Our team missed their beacon and attempted to bring the lift back down too early, causing the springs in the junction to launch it back and tip the robot. Our third match ended in loss once again, and our lunch break began. We wanted to finish the robot game strong, so we decided to work on a strategy now. One of the most important scoring possibilities is to create a circuit. To create a circuit in the match, your alliance must create a line of scored junctions from corner to corner. This provides a large bonus at the end of the match if you can keep it. This can prove difficult, however, since the other alliance can take back the scored junctions by placing their cone on top of yours. The only way to make sure a junction is permanently yours is to claim it with a beacon during the endgame. Each alliance only has two beacons, so this this can be a very valuable resource. After the break ended, we were right back in the action with our fourth match of the day. Go! Qualification match 19 began with our auto missing the junction. However, our drivers were ready. We began placing cones in as many different junctions as we could. Everything was going smoothly, however, the drivers didn't know one thing. A circuit could connect between junctions diagonally, not just side to side, so they spent a long time trying to get a cone onto the ground junction instead of the corner and ended up not getting the circuit. We still won though for our first win of the day with a score of 139. Soon after, our last qualification match began. Once again, we were alone. It was us against two teams that did not have any lift mechanism. We immediately began working towards the circuit, but this time, with the knowledge of how they work, very quickly, we were close to getting the circuit. However, even with no lift, the opposing alliance was a strong competitor. They did whatever they could to block us from navigating through the junctions, making it much harder for us to score. Within the last few seconds of the match, we managed to score the final cone, getting our first circuit. In the end, the score was 78-46, to with us winning. After the qualification matches are over, a process called Alliance Selection begins. These top four teams from the qualifications get to ask teams to join their alliance in the elimination matches. Luckily, the second alliance team captain, Tie-Dye Samurai, chose Plus 3 Robotics and us to be part of their alliance. Even with only two wins under our belt, we still managed to get into the elimination matches. The elimination matches work like a bracket system. First, there are semifinals. These are a best out of three scenario, so winning twice will advance you to the finals. With three team alliances, only two teams are on the field at once. First, the alliance captain team picks one of the two teams to play in the first match while the other stands by. In match two, the third team must play, and if it reaches a third, any team from the alliance can play. For our first semifinal match, Tie-Dye Samurai, our alliance captain, chose to play with Plus 3 Robotics first. They played a great match with each other, and won the first semifinal match, scoring 149 to 23. Now it was our turn, and the second semifinal match began. Our autonomous unfortunately failed due to a misalignment, and so did Tie-Dye Samurai's. We began working towards a circuit as soon as the driver control period began, while Tie-Dye Samurai worked on cycling cones onto as many different junctions as possible. Within a minute of the driver control period, we had already formed a circuit, and the match was a success of 169 to 43. We were now in the finals, and the only thing left to do is to beat the opposing alliance in the finals. However, Valley X and their alliance won their semifinals as well. We knew that we were scoring about the same as them in the semifinals, so so this would be a tough matchup. For finals match 1, Tie-Dye Samurai and Plus 3 Robotics went up first. The first match began with us falling behind. Tie-Dye Samurai's auto failed and Plus 3 Robotics hit Valley X. The match was fairly even as it went on, then our alliance managed to place both beacons on the field, propelling their score above the other, winning us the match 128-84. Match 2 was coming up, and if we won this match, we would win the entire competition along with our alliance partners, even after losing 3 out of our 5 qualifying matches. The second final match began, and our autonomous hit into Valley X's robot. Neither of us scored points from our preloaded cone. Valley X went to cycle cones, but accidentally picked up 2 cones at once and missed the junction, getting a penalty. The driver control period starts. Our driver coach drops the driver station. Valley X scores the first cone of the driver control period, and we start working towards building a circuit. Tie Dye Samurai scores a ground junction next to the other alliance's substation, making it a for them to grab cones without knocking over and getting penalized. Endgame starts and Valiac scores their beacon. Both us and Tie-Dye Samurai also score our beacons. The score looked close. After a long wait, the final score was finally revealed. 110-75. Us. 
After losing most of our qualification matches, we still managed to turn around and win the entire competition. After some technical issues, The awards began. The awards went by and we got runner-up to the Design and Motivate Award. And then, it was time for the Inspire Award. The judges had chills as the team talked passionately about the measurable impact of both their technical and their non-technical outreach in their desert community. This team's well-considered design matched form with function in a creative, effective, and consistent manner. Like a jet streaking over the Mojave, this team roared to life off and off the field. Please congratulate your Connected 2022 Inspire Award winner, Team 14436, Rory Norman! Not only did we win the robot game, but we also won the Inspire Award. We will be competing again in the Arizona State Championship in February, and we're not done making changes yet.